Greetings. Today I'm going to talk about factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping is necessary when you have a leading coefficient with a trinomial. For example, 6 is our leading coefficient. So we can't just do our simple trinomial factoring. We'll need to group this into two groups. Um, when you're doing factor by grouping, you're going to look at the leading coefficient and you're going to multiply it by the constant term. Okay, so 6 times 5 is 30. Now, as with all factoring, you're looking for a factor pair of 30 that adds to the middle number. Remember, factor pairs are things like 3 times 10, 1 times 30, 6 times 5, 15 times 2. There's lots of factor pairs of 30. Now, notice that to get a positive 30 and adds to negative 13, both of the factors would have to be negative. So let's look at a negative 3 and a negative 10. You multiply those together, you get a positive 30. You add those together, you get a negative 13. So here's our factor pair. Now with factor by grouping, what you're going to do is you're going to take those two numbers to help split out this middle term. Okay, so drop down the 6x squared. So instead of negative 13x, you're going to use these two numbers get a negative 3x minus 10x and then drop down your constant. We're going to use that original constant of 5. Okay, excuse my writing with my mouse. That's a 2x squared. Okay, so what you want to do is this is called factor by grouping because you have four terms and you want to think of those each in two groups now. Okay, so look at this first group, these first two terms and you're looking for a greatest common factor. Greatest common factor of 6 and negative 3. In this first group, always factor out a positive number. So you get a 3, and between x squared and x, you have a common factor of x. Okay, so what you're doing is you're factoring out a 3x. Think of it as dividing 6x squared by 3x, and what would be left? Well, you'd have 2x left. Okay, you have a negative 3x divided by 3x, and you have a negative 1. What you're doing when you're factoring the greatest common factor, it's really like the opposite of the distributive property. You're pulling a 3x out of both of those terms. Okay, now over here, be careful. We have a negative over here. When you have a negative as the first number of your second group, you always want to factor out a negative number. Okay, what does a 10 and a 5 have in common? They have a 5, but because this first term is negative, factor out a negative 5. Okay, so be careful. Negative 10x divided by negative 5 would be a positive 2x. And then a positive 5 divided by negative 5 would be a negative 1. So when that negative gets distributed, it becomes the positive 5. Okay, you know you've done factor by grouping correctly if you look inside your parentheses and these expressions match. 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1. So that's going to become one of your factors is the piece that matches. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when you ignore those two pieces, what do you have left? You have a 3x minus 5. 3x minus 5. Okay, so you factor, remember factoring, you're trying to get rid of this x squared. Notice your degree is x to the first. Okay, so we've successfully factored out 6x squared minus 13x plus 5. You could FOIL these back to check. If you FOIL these binomials back, check, you should get the answer. Now, if this was an equation and you were solving this equation, setting these equal to 0, what factoring does is it helps you find the two solutions of the two zeros. So you'd be asking what value of x makes this piece zero? Well, if you need to, make a small algebra equation out of it. 3x minus 5 is equal to zero. And you know how to do that. You add 5 to both sides. And then to get x by itself, you would divide by 3. So x would be equal to 5 thirds or what makes this one zero? 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. To solve that small algebra equation, you would 
add one to both sides and then divide by two. So x is equal to five thirds or x is equal to one half. That's called the zero product property when you're solving these two binomials to see what makes the equation equal to zero. Okay, if you didn't catch everything the first time, you can watch this video again or as many times as you need to and to rehearse it. Until next time, thanks a lot.